what's up everyone welcome back to the channel my name is travis and welcome back to another video today is going to be part two in our calcium reactor experiment here in the fish room now if you guys remember from part one yesterday uh, we were running into a little bit of an issue with the uh, ph stick tester uh, basically the numbers were not very consistent they were bouncing around it was flickering a little bit so i didn't feel comfortable with the results and uh, on top of that i really don't like the coarse or extra coarse media here in the secondary chambers so we're going to address both of those issues here in this video and retest now i already went ahead and recalibrated the ph probe in the calcium reactor as well as my sump now admittedly i haven't done it in about two years uh actually it's pretty good it was only off by like a half a degree or a half a point so it really wasn't that bad so i just made the adjustment in the apex uh, so remember that guys if you are recalibrating your probes and your pH, your pH probes and your uh, calcium reactors that you do make the adjustment on whatever you're using to regulate the on and off of the CO2 tank because you don't want to be dissolving and vice versa not dissolving enough media so just make those adjustments to match the numbers and uh, you'll be good to go so with that said in this video we're going to go ahead and retest I'm going to uh, do the main chamber not really worried too much about the flow we will double check the flow a comparison from the beginning to the end on the final chamber but outside of that we're not really going to bother with it more importantly we're going to be looking at the pH so I am going to use the same probe I'm going to uh, test the reactor we're going to use the apex display screen to get an accurate updated quicker response on numbers but we're going to test the pH in the main chamber and then I'm going to pull the probe when I pull some effluent out and then test that with the same probe to see the difference and then do that for each chamber now when it comes to the third chamber here I am going to use uh, I have a couple of containers of this media so I'm going to use a hammer and smash it up to be little pieces put it in there and uh, I don't know if I can smash it I probably could it's just rock right so uh, we're gonna try to uh, make it smaller the way that I like it to be for my uh, secondary chambers and really see if there is a difference uh, between uh, pH when it comes to adding not only two chambers or one additional chamber but a secondary chamber and uh, what the pH increase is going to be for the effluence. Okay so we're going to go ahead and do test one. Uh, basically uh, we don't have to remove the pH probe for this particular test because we're just going to be uh, looking at the effluent coming out of the main chamber since the pH probe is already there. I'm just going to go ahead and simply disconnect the flow module or FMM module um, sensor and put it on the output just to get a baseline for flow. go ahead and turn everything back on and we'll go uh, check the apex okay now that everything is connected let's go to move over to the apex and see what the flow is okay looking at 5.9 and we're gonna go ahead and check out the apex display since this seems to update a little bit sooner uh, looking at calcium reactor pH 6.68 now I do allow it to fluctuate between uh, 6.65 and 6.7 and uh, yeah, so that's our baseline, about six gallons per hour and 6.68. So uh, let's go ahead and connect our secondary chamber and uh, test the results. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set up our secondary chamber. Uh, I'm gonna do the same output, the FMN. There we go. Reconnect that. Now we're probably gonna make a mess. Uh, I'm gonna use, because this output right now is technically going to this chamber, so I just have to uh, Pulling some plugs here. All right, so we got our output coming out of here, come down to here, which we have to move. So my plan is to disconnect both at the same time and reconnect, and hopefully uh, not make too big of a mess. So let's go. Take a time. Ooh, 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 ooh. And yes, I can do this because I have a fish room. But if you if you if you're doing this on the first floor, probably not a good idea. All right, well, we are reconnected. So this is just kind of hanging by itself. We might as well just pull this out now because we're gonna come back to it later. And uh, we have the output coming in here. All right, so I'm gonna turn everything back on, let it stabilize, and then we'll pull some effluent out and test the pH. Okay, so I went ahead and waited till the pH in the reactor got pretty close to 6.68. So let's go ahead and check the flow real quick before we pull our sample. Looks at 5.5, so we did lose about a half a, a gallon like before. So let's go ahead and pull our sample. Just gonna fill it all the way up. Okay, 
Okay. Set this right here. I'm going to turn off the calcium reactor, uh, the flow, and the CO2. That way we don't have anything shooting out. And then we'll pull the probe and do our test. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull our probe out. Put it in our sample. And uh, just gonna shake it around a little bit in the air bubbles. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for about five minutes and come back just because I want the number to settle and uh, we'll see if it worked. Okay, so I went ahead and let the pH probe settle for a few minutes. Let's go ahead and check out the results. And it looks like it went to 6.76. So we started at 6.68, now 6.76. So that does confirm, in fact, that adding a secondary chamber to your calcium reactor uh, does increase the pH. Um, not that much with this particular media. Um, in the future, if you guys want, I can do a test with some finer sand base uh, media to see if that makes a difference. But uh, yeah, so right now the secondary chamber does help. Let's go ahead and get this guy on the system. But before we do that, let's get the hammer out and start smashing some rock. All right guys, so it's time to smash up some of this extra coarse media. Uh, we're looking for some tiny, tiny pieces uh, just to see if it makes any difference for the third chamber. Now, uh, yeah, so I got a bag and kind of hopefully keep it in the bag even though I know it's probably gonna break all over the place, but we're gonna find out. Got the hammer. And I got the media, so let's go ahead and get started. No idea how much to use. Yeah, we're just gonna wing it. And by the way, don't don't do this at home. And of course, uh, wearing some protective glasses here. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Oh, okay, this isn't too bad. I'm gonna get comfortable here. I'm going to definitely fast forward this. guys we're back that was uh that was interesting um not something i recommend because you can see definitely wasted some media uh breaking it up not not a fan of that but hey we're doing an experiment here it's all right so what i'm gonna do now is just rinse off what we have um, we're gonna dump this reactor out first rinse off what we have just in case there's any kind of extra dust or plastic or anything in there we can uh get that out of there so let me just dump this current media into the bucket here Down we go. Let's go ahead and drop this in. Okay, good to go. And uh, let me turn on my rinser jigger. And I'm using one of my baskets here that has holes on the side just for rinsing purposes. So it's not as fine as I would usually have my media, but I just felt like I was wasting a ton. And uh, not gonna lie, my arm got kind of tired. It was three bags worth of uh, nonsense there. So I'm um, gonna fill this thing up, try to do it without making a huge mess. Ah, whatever, we're already making a mess. It is what it is. Can I get just enough? Not pretty close. You know something? We're gonna put these little finies in here because why not? It's kind of the consistency I actually want right there. But uh, hey, I'll take what I can get. All right, so I'm gonna clean that off, put this back together. Um, we're gonna reconnect it, let it sit for probably a couple hours, depending, and uh, test the results. Hey guys, so we're gonna do our third and final test. It is the next day. I uh, didn't get a chance to do it uh, yesterday. I had a bunch of stuff going on. So uh, 6.68, the same starting pH as before, and the flow is at 5.3. Let's go ahead and grab our sample. Do, 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 do. And we'll do basically the same thing we did before, and then we'll wrap up the video. Alrighty, I'm going to set this right here. Let me go and get the tripod and we will uh, do our test. 
Okay, so I turned the flow off, the CO2 tank off, and the mixing pump. Same thing as before. Okay, so we're gonna give this a minute to kind of settle, and uh, then I'll bring you guys over. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind when you are adding an additional reactor to your setup, uh, make sure uh, that uh, you know, you're aware that this media does dissolve uh, not as fast as the main chamber, but it does dissolve and it does release calcium and alkalinity into the system. So um, if you're adding a secondary chamber, regardless of the size, just make sure you're monitoring your calcium and alkalinity pretty closely over the next several days just to make sure you catch any spikes or anything like that uh, in the future. Now, uh, the goal of this was basically just to see uh, if it was going to elevate the pH a little bit more. Now remember, this media has to be at a certain pH to even dissolve in the first place. So if you're thinking that you're gonna dissolve this main chamber at 6.65 and you're magically gonna be like 7.9 when you come out of here, that's just not possible. Um, I would like to see, or I would be interested to see if we had a secondary or a third chamber that was either the same size as the main or bigger uh, just to gas off as much of that stuff as we possibly could. Now again, there's gonna be limitations uh, to how far, but either way, um, yeah. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. Let's check out the pH. Looking at 6.79, so what was it before? 6.76, let's check out our numbers here real quick. So our first test, yep, 6.68 um, with 5.9 gallons per hour. Second, 6.76 at 5.4, and then we had 6. Uh, seven nine at uh, what five point three. So really, the set the adding that third chamber really didn't uh, do much more than what the secondary chamber is. And like I've said before, we're not gonna we're not gonna get into the sevens or anything like that, given because this media has to be at a certain um, pH to even dissolve or even consume some of that CO two in the first place. So uh, yeah, so pretty cool test. Uh, at least I think it is. It, it kind of uh, confirmed. Um, just kind of what I was wondering. Uh, I knew it was going up, but I didn't know to what percent so or what or what amount. So uh, it's good to find out what that actually is with the second and the third chamber. Now, really, the only benefit at this point of having or keeping this third chamber on is just to have more media to dissolve, making the effluent uh, stronger or more potent when it comes to calcium alkalinity. So I'm going to keep it on there. Plus, you know, I'm a gear junkie, so having another reactor isn't something that I'm going to be shying away from anytime soon. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Um, maybe I will do the future test with a bigger reactor and finer media just to kind of see if that makes any difference. But outside of that, I appreciate you guys being here. And uh, if you want to support the channel, head over to fishofhex.com. And uh, yeah, buy three, get one free on all 3D printing. And I'll see you guys later. All right, man. Peace.